area and perimeter with Ms. H. Perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a 2D shape. This could be the fence around a yard. It could be the baseboards in a room or the crown molding in a room. It could even be the frame around a picture. With perimeter, we're talking about a distance. It's considered a one direction distance because if we were to unfold that, it would still go into a straight line. And as we do some problems, I, I think you'll see what I mean by that. So let's look at our first rectangle. This is a 25 inch by 16 inch rectangle. And what we're going to do is pretend like we're walking around this figure. Let me go ahead and put the dimensions on all the way around. We're going to pretend like we're walking around the figure. So we would do the 25 inches, 16 inches, 25 inches, 16 inches. So if I were to take all of those red arrows and put them side by side, um, or end to end rather, we would get a length that's one direction. That's what I mean by one direction. And let's think about if I'm walking this around, what would I do to find the perimeter? I would start with the 25 inches. I would add 16 to that, then 25 to that, followed by 16. Now, of course, I'm not doing that in my head. So let's go ahead and work it out. 25 plus 16 is 41. 41 plus 25 is 66. And 66 plus 16 is 82. And so my perimeter is 82 inches. So my unit is not going to change from what it was all the way around. Let's look at another one. This one is a 36 foot by 124 foot rectangle. And some of you might have been saying, Ms. Harper, there might be a different way of putting those numbers together to make it easier. And I'm hoping you're thinking that as well. So let's go ahead and put our other dimensions on. And I want us to start with our length, our 36. And notice we have two of them. So I'm going to add those two together first. Then I'm going to go to my width and do those two together. And now I'm going to put both of those sums together. And I end up with 320 feet. Let's look at what we did. We added both of the lengths plus both of the widths. And when we put those together, we ended up with the perimeter. That's the formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle. So let's uh, use that formula as we work out this word problem. Jack and Sam are building a tree house. The base of the tree house is a rectangle that measures 14 feet by 12 feet. What is the perimeter of the tree house? Now the first thing I'm going to do is draw my rectangle. And then I'm going to put my 14 feet and my 12 feet on there. And let's look at our formula. So we need two of the lengths. So I'm going to do 2 times 14, which is 28. Now I need two of the widths. Okay. So that's 24. And then I'm going to add those together. 28 and 24 are 52. So our perimeter is 52 feet. Now let's look at area. And the area is the measure of the space inside a 2D shape. And when we're measuring the space on the inside, our units are now square units because we're thinking about how many squares are in that. And I really do mean squares. And because we're doing now a 2D shape, how many of those 2D squares fit inside, we're now talking about square feet or square inches. 
For instance, let's look at this 14 inch by 11 inch rectangle. Now remember I said we're looking to see how many squares. So I'm going to put some squares in there. And each of the squares would be 1 inch by 1 inch because our units are inches. And in fact, we have 14 rows with 11 in each row. So 14 rows with 11 squares in each row. And I'm hoping your mind is going to multiplication and thinking that looks like an array. And it's exactly like an array in this case. Um, a 14 by 11 array. And that's how we're going to figure out how many squares are in this rectangle. We're going to multiply 14 and 11. So let's go ahead and do 4 times 11, which is 44, and 10 times 11, which is 110, and we end up with 154. We have 154 square inches in there, so 154 of those squares that are an inch by an inch. And this is one way we can show that square, look at the unit, how we have the inch abbreviated, and then notice that 2 in superscript because we're saying it's two directions. It's square inches or inches square. So let's look at another one. We have another rectangle. This one has the dimensions of 36 feet by 124, which simply means I have 36 rows of squares with 124 squares in each row. So 36 rows and there's 124 square feet in each row. Remember, it's like an array. So I'm going to multiply 36 by 24. So 6 times 124 is 744. And 30 times 124 is 3,720. When I combine those, I get 4,464. It's not just feet. Remember, this is area, and we're talking two directions because we're measuring all the space on the inside of a two-dimensional shape. So it's square feet. And this is a different way to show it. I wrote out the word square in front of feet. Okay. And think about what we did. We multiplied the length times the width to get the area. And that is the formula for finding the area of a rectangle. Now let's apply that formula to a word problem. Zeke and Diane are building a deck. The deck is in the shape of a rectangle that measures 26 feet by 18 feet. What is the area of the deck? So when I do word problems, just like the last time, I like to first draw my shape. Now I'm going to add my dimensions to the shape, my 26 feet for my length and then my width of 18 feet. And the formula, area equals length times width. So I'm going to multiply my length times the width. I'll start with 8 times 26, which gives me 208. Then I'll move to 10 times 26, which is 260 for a total of 468. So we have 468 square feet. So this time I abbreviated square and feet. Okay, just another way to write it. And we have 468 square feet. Now I have some practice problems for you to work on. So when they come up, you're going to want to pause the video. So here are the four practice problems. Go ahead and pause the video while you find the perimeter and area for each rectangle. When you are ready to check your work, just pr press play and then we can see the answers. Okay, welcome back. Let's go over the answers to the practice problem. Okay, so here are the answers. Go ahead and pause the video so that you have a chance to go over yours and see if there, which ones you need to review. 
Did you get them all correct? If not, you can go back and review the video. If you still need help, please check with your teacher, and I'll see you next time.